Someone is running around outside with their crocodile. <laughs> Look at this. Bisonga, that's for inside. You have to take it inside. It's very cold. It's your inside toy, Grim. Come, come now. Come on in. Oh, it's so cold today. Come now. Turn around. Let's see if you get it. Did it? <laughs> oh, you are not the smartest little cookie, are you? Are you fiend? It's about minus 12 degrees outside, so it's a bit cold. But it's, of course, I'm gonna say it is so beautiful. But I need, this is, this was very cold. <laughs> I'm also in my pajamas. Just starting the day with playing with Grim. Let's also go and look at the view. Oh, here comes. <laughs> look at this view. It's just so peaceful and so pink this morning. We only have a few more days until the polar night and that feels crazy, but it's, it's the truth. So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna bring you guys over to the boat, to our boat that we've taken out of the water and show you where it's at and what we do during the winter. We also have to go get a lot of stuff out of it because you'll see why it's literally just stood parked in a place. So we're gonna get a, stuff out, a lot of stuff out for the winter. So I'm gonna bring my coffee, I'm gonna put some more clothes on and we're gonna head over to the boat. While we make the 10 minute drive to the boat, I take the time to play my favorite relaxing game, June's Journey. This game is a hidden object mystery game. The game is beautifully set in the 1920s and each scene takes you through a murder mystery story, where the main protagonist, June Parker, is on a quest to solve the murder of her sister. What I really like about this game is how relaxing it is. I love looking for the secret clues and objects while not feeling like it's too challenging. And I mean, just look at how beautiful my house is. <laughs> my whole plot of land can be decked out in flowers and decorations, and I'm keeping it quite minimalistic at the moment. But I do have a very nice patio area. And also, let's not forget about the beagles. Any game that gives you dogs is a good game. So head to the link in my description to download June's Journey for free. And I just want to say thank you because it is thanks to all of you watching and sponsors like June's Journey that I can keep making these videos. So just thank you all for being here and let's head to the boat. It's cold today. We are down at the marina and this is where everybody puts their boats outside on their trailers like this and they will be here all winter. So now we need to take everything out of them uh, out of our boats like the duvets and we have food in there and a lot of other things that we had during the season. This is like not the most ideal place to have a boat during the winter, but we have no options up here. We, I think there's like one heated garage place for like two boats and that costs a lot and there's just no availability. So what you do is you just stick your boat on your trailer outside. So we have to, oh, I hate this. We have to go up into the boat with like a ladder.
Yeah, so I will be I will not be doing that. I'll be down here. One thing that I really love about Svalbard is that all the seasons are so different. After four long months of midnight sun and incredible boating experiences, we dock our boat for the winter and get ready to start a new exciting season full of activities. Looking back at our summer, I feel very lucky to live in such a place where we can have these kind of experiences daily. This summer we visited Pyramiden, the abandoned Soviet ghost town. We, well, I, took some very refreshing dips in the two-degree Arctic Ocean. <sighs> we spent many nights anchored in front of huge glacier fronts and got to share the space with some of the Arctic's many inhabitants. and many, many, many cups of coffee were shared with breathtaking views in the background. But I don't feel sad that this time of year is over. I feel content. I am ready for the darkness of the polar night and all the beauty that it brings. I'm ready to give my mind a well-needed rest from the endless, incredible scenery we witness here. It just puts my creative senses on overload. <laughs> but the end is the start of something new, and I'm very excited. Like all of these, we also have to put in the wash. So we pay how much for our boat place each year? I think we pay around like five thousand a year, and then we can put it up here in the winter. Okay, so this doesn't cost anything extra, no. No, not for now. Five thousand Norwegian kroners is like almost like five hundred American dollars or five hundred euro ish, very easily converted. I'm sorry if you're wondering the noise. It's this little guy. <laughs> you're so cute, but you make a lot of noise in the car. This is what he does. He's not hot. He's just a little bit stressed about being close to the boat. And then the docks go, We, you guys just took them up. Like a week ago? Yeah, like a week ago. 
but there's still two in there. So those docks, somebody else will take up later. Yeah, there's five, six docks. Still in the water? Five. Five still. Oh, I saw once that there was like this place where you could put your boat, but it was very expensive by the if harbor. You're gonna, if you're gonna fix the boat, you can stay there for 1,000 per month, and then you pay for electricity. And where's that? It's in town. It's, okay, uh, but there's like how many places for how many boats? Like? Between four and eight, maybe. Oh, depending yeah. on the sizes. Okay, the so that would cost a thousand kroners a month plus electricity. Yeah. I mean, it's not too bad if you think about it, but I'm, I have a feeling it's full. Yeah. <laughs> it's full. Right. Because I mean, that could be an option for in the future if we want to have it inside. Yeah, but if then, you're going to fix it. Oh, so you can't park it there? No. Oh, got it. So you can only park the it there. The one who needs to fix the boat, they go first. And if there are nobody who's going to fix it, then you can park it. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Now we've taken everything out. Yeah. Anything else we need to go back and get? No, just charge your batteries a couple of times. You said you flushed some glucol? Yeah, glucol. I don't know. If this I'm going to have to Google what it is. Glycol? I don't know, I'll Google it. One inboard system as you have in a car with glucol, and then you have the outboard system to take the salt water in and cool the engine. And that one is full of salt water, and then you take glucol and mix with water, and then you flush that system. About like 25 liters goes through this engine. So it doesn't freeze, so the, there's no water to freeze. And there's no water the to pipes. freeze in there. If you have, if you don't do it, then the pipes are gonna freeze, or the engine, I don't know, like, it's not gonna be good. And then you have to take care of the toilet, of course. Take some glucol in that one. Oh yeah. And then... Uh, and empty, empty everything. Empty all the water. Now we're gonna take all of the duvet covers, all of the uh, towels, and go to Stude and put them in a wash. Because it'd be very nice to just have that all done. Yeah. And then breakfast maybe. Again, a late breakfast. It's 12 o'clock in the daytime. Oh, what do you think? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Oh, you're so good, Grim. You're doing so good. Many reindeer here. There's like a whole family. They are so camouflaged. Look, they're over there. Check out that camouflage. <laughs> 